greater detail because we're talking about anatomy and physiology. Also, Extreme Health Academy, um, if you have any health issues whatsoever, you get on there, you still get two weeks for free uh, if you type in Bergman 14. Lungs, okay. That means the third, fourth, and fifth cervical vertebrae. The nerve that comes out of there is called the phrenic nerve, the diaphragm. Okay, and this is how you actually breathe. And we're going to go over literally how to breathe disease away, how to oxygenate the system. But also, you've got the cardiac and respiratory center at the top of the neck. So if you have any kind of a neck issue, do you think you might have good diaphragmatic function or poor? Let's you got to draw in. So kind of like that, you're drawing it in. When you exhale, it's passive because the lungs want to collapse. Now, you've got this diaphragm. The diaphragm has a couple of holes in it. Wait, where does the nerve that supplies the diaphragm come out of? C3, C4, C5, okay? Keeps you alive. So you've got this innervation in the neck. Now, the diaphragm, when you're breathing, little air sacs opening and closing. Now, when I was teaching human dissection, if you take a lung out of a standard healthy human and cut it right in the middle, these sacs are so, so, so small. It looks almost like it's solid. Like, like if you're in the kitchen cutting over open a liver. If you cut into someone who's got damage to the lungs, and I mean severe damage, okay, you'll even see these people in, in regular stores, their chest is going to be popped out. It's called barrel chest. And this is what an emphysema victim looks like. When you look at their lung tissue, it's amazing. It looks like a moth-eaten, you know, sweater. Big old huge holes run down in it. So you have this oxygen carbon dioxide transfer that takes place in these alveoli. Now, if you are dehydrated or if you have a condition called asthma, which asthma is a problem of the smooth muscle control of the lungs, not actually the lungs, but you'll have 10 times the amount of mucus in those lungs as opposed to the surfactant that you should have. Or below a half a point, you're dead. So you've got these sensors in the neck. So you got the heart here, and coming off the heart, you got the common carotid coming up, and it splits in the internal and external, affecting that chemo and baroreceptor, pressure and chemical receptor inside of the neck. Now, so, so when we look at this, there is a reflex in there. So your body is always monitoring itself. So if the carbon dioxide level is too high, it's going to send a signal down. So the nervous system is intimately involved in the heart function. Um, it's, it's interesting because we're looking at a couple of um, when we now um, it's interesting a couple of articles here on how chiropractic adjustments and I love this one no adverse effects were recorded we conclude that restoration of the atlas which is the top bone in the neck um, is associated with a marked sustained reduction in blood people and just just try it sit up nice and straight and round your shoulders and try taking a deep breath it ain't working real well Okay, and you're like this, or your students are like this, okay, or your, your nephew's like this watching TV, and you sit like this, oh my God, that makes a big difference. So just a posture analysis of your um, and it works really well. You can also use a plastic water bottle. That's not this exercise. This exercise is painful and effective. Okay, because if you figure, if you got this rounded over shoulder, that's because you're rounding it over and you're really important. Because those discs that separate the vertebrae are 70% fluid. And when you increase what's called intrathecal pressure, you're forcing fluid back into those discs. 